Cool. <laughs> Are you nervous? No. Okay. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to chat with Abby, who's going to be in some of the videos going forward, teaching you some PT stuff, some exercise stuff, and whatnot. She has an amazing background. She's currently in a postdoctoral ortho residency. Um, and yeah, so apologize if the there's background noise today. We're doing this in a little bit of a different setting, different setup. Um, we just went hiking. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about you, kind of your background, that kind of thing. My name is Abby. I graduated from undergrad in Colorado. I was a collegiate swimmer, um, swam for three years in college, further went to University of Tennessee to get my doctorate of physical therapy and am now working full time as a outpatient physical therapist and getting my postdoc residency for orthopedics. So we'll start a little bit like educational background. Mm -hmm. um, you said you went to undergrad in Colorado. Do you remember what your major is? Because I don't, so I don't blame you if you don't. <laughs> yes, I double majored. I was an exercise science and an athletic training major in undergrad. Okay, cool. And then I guess um, you said you swam in college. Did you start with swimming growing up or did you have do other sports and how did you get into swimming? So I actually was a dancer um, when I first started. Um, decided I absolutely hated all the glitter and makeup and being on stage was not a forte of mine. So I tried golf, basketball, volleyball and basically realized hand-eye coordination skills were also not on the list of things for me to be good at. So got into swimming, ended up loving it, swam from fourth grade all the way through my junior year of college and desperately miss it. <laughs> so how do you train now? Um, so a little bit of swimming here and there, but I am trying to run a lot more. I am running the St. Jude Half Marathon again for the fourth year and then a lot of weightlifting and having fun with it. Um, so what made you get into PT like as a career? I injured myself a lot as a kid. <laughs> um, I broke my arm in elementary school jumping off the bed. I sprained my ankle while trying to run for swim practice and ha that was my first round of PT. I actually hated my physical therapist. Absolutely hated her. What about her did you not like? Um, she just did not treat me with a lot of respect and like I knew what I was doing. Granted, I was in high school, high school kids can be tough, but I just realized I did not want that aspect in PT. I kind of knew I wanted to go into healthcare and that was kind of like the game changer. Um, and then through athletic training and injuring myself more in college and working with a bunch of injured athletes, I really found my passion in like helping other people be able to get back to the things that they want to do. With that being said, is there any particular population that you're more like most passionate about treating that you want to like treat more of, focus a little bit more on, or you just kind of like uh, enjoy the variety and spice of life? I do enjoy variety, but athletes are my passion. After undergrad, I loved being on the sidelines, being able to work post-op repairs to get them back. And it's just like a whole different aspect of not just getting back to typical day-to-day -day function, but getting them back to an elite level and being able to see them thrive in their sport again. Oh, I love it. Any particular sports you like working with the most? I don't know. I did. I love football. Being on the sideline for football. I grew up in Texas and Friday Night Lights are just like a whole different ball game. And so football was a blast from high school to collegiate football. I absolutely loved it. But I actually worked with softball my senior year of college and loved it and have had a couple softball players in the clinic and I'm having so much fun treating them with just different injuries that mm -hmm. you don't get to see very frequently being an upper body population. Yeah, there's definitely like different injuries that come with different populations and it's like certain sports are definitely predisposed to other ones like you have 
injury is named after a certain like tennis elbow or a golfer's elbow or things like that that are more common in those particular sports but then you have other sports um, whether it be like a contact sport or a non-contact sport where you get a whole variety um, I know like the athletic trainers when I was in college said for gymnastics it was like you'll see everything and anything um, whereas with like softball you're gonna see a lot more like shoulder injuries elbow injuries things like that you're gonna see a little bit of everything probably some like ankle sprains and whatnot but you definitely like depending on the sport will see a little bit more or less of like one thing yeah and what made you do a residency program um so i actually graduated during the covid era um, I knew I wanted to do a residency program going into PT school when I went on all my like interviews and like just doing a bunch of research I really was interested in doing a residency was not sure what um, once COVID hit I realized I knew my sports aspect pretty well but like when it came to like manual skills needed for like an outpatient orthopedic program I knew I was good, but not where I wanted to be. And I wanted to be that therapist that people could come to and know that like they were gonna get the best quality of care and like be able to get understood and treated well. And I think just even being halfway through the residency program, I've already grown exponentially in that care. So she has, <laughs> I'm one of her mentors. She has, Thank you. <laughs> so, but I just, it's a great way to like further expand your skills. You come out as a generalist from PT school and just being able to dive even further into like one area of expertise is just so much better. Yeah, it's rewarding from like a treating standpoint, from a work-life balance standpoint. Um, like you just feel a lot more confident. You know your exercises and your manual interventions are going to make a difference and you can better adapt to the individual and things like that but it's it's really rewarding for sure yeah. so if you follow me over on instagram you probably have seen me dog sit abby's yes. dog so what is your favorite part so she has as of the time of filming how old is your dog and if you want to share the name of your dog or anything like that. yes so i have a 10 month old labradoodle named hennessy she's staring at us yes she's right now <laughs> jumping on the door uh she's absolutely adorable she is actually my plus one on this trip um she's great um my parents own her two siblings arlo and poppy but she is a blast. She loves hanging out with Laura and watching her do all of her flips and handstands and interrupting workouts on a frequent basis. But she also loves running with me and trying to pull my arm off. So <laughs> she's great. <laughs> so what is your favorite part about being a dog mom? Oh, man. So far, this is her first trip this weekend that we are she's on. She's done very well. But just being able to like do different things with her, whether that be like go for a walk and make sure that I get her out and am also being active or going on a hike and just getting to like explore and go different places with her. That and just, you know, having someone to like come home to that I can rant to and they aren't going to complain back <laughs> is great. You get all the cuddles and attention that you need and can go to bed and go to clinic the next day and it's great <laughs> good job Henry <laughs> doing <Good> job. great <laughs> going back to training do you prefer to train alone or with someone else so I like lifting alone for the most part I don't mind doing like hit workouts with weights with other people and just like really getting moving or like circuit training where you can go in and out with others my short runs, I like being able to put my like headphones in and just make it through my like two or three miles. But when I did my very first half marathon, I had a fantastic training partner that we did all of our long runs with. And I honestly don't think I would have made it through the half marathon without him. I ruptured like everything in my ankle that weekend and still finished the race because he kept forcing me to keep going and it was great. So now I'm going to have to find someone else to run with for this year, but she keeps asking me and 
once I ran my half marathon, I said I will never do that again. I think we should take a vote from your followers on if Laura <laughs> should start no. training for no, this half that marathon would take with me. Way too much time, and I would die. And no, I don't think my body could handle it. Maybe Steve. We should could, we make Steve? We could potentially train. try and recruit Steve too, but I don't, he needs a ball to chase after. <laughs> what are you most excited about with this page, with either teaching people things or as the experience to grow professionally or whatever, what are you most excited about? I think just like having an environment where like other people really enjoy fitness and just like enjoy working out. I grew up and it was like, working out and going to the gym was such a task which is why i love swimming so much it was a workout in itself but like it was so much more than that it was like a community you were on a team you gotta like support one another and you know clear your mind to doing an activity for two hours straight and when i quit that going to the gym was such a defeating thing like figuring out how to be a normal person again and not have sports and go to the gym and be fit and do all these things so having a community again behind you to actually invest in you and get you to where you want to be physically and mentally is very exciting for me yeah I know I definitely struggled with that after like quitting gymnastics it's just like well what do I do and I know like a ton of other athletes um, almost like lose a sense of identity when they do retire from their sport and that was like a huge part of them. I guess how did you work through that um, transition? So I actually was, I had a really odd transition. So when I was swimming, I was swimming full time and swimming is well over 20 hours a week when you swim collegiately with weight training and inside the pool, outside the pool. I also was a little crazy with my college credits and never took anything less than 17 credits a semester. Plus athletic training, which you're on the sidelines 20 plus hours a week for pre-practice, post-practice, and all of their normal activities. So I was given the kind of ultimatum at the end of my sophomore year with you need to pick one. You either can be a college athlete and continue swimming and then go into your bachelor's degree for athletic training, change your major, or just go into athletic training. And I knew swimming was not going to be a lifetime thing. I was not anywhere near the Olympic level and that was perfectly fine with me, but I knew I could benefit people by doing something athletic and that I still loved. So. I actually swam club um, through our college university for the last two years of school. Still had a sense of community, didn't have official practices that I had to go to. Ended up coaching with swimming to kind of like help ease and transition. So I got to, you know, invest in little kids and them growing up to figure out what they wanted to do with their life. And it was a little bit easier of a transition and I didn't hit my actual transition until I got into PT school. And I mean, it was very hard, but I worked out every day and just tried to find a different aspect of working out, whether that was in the gym, I swam, I started running, which was very hard for a swimmer to go to a land sport. Um, that first six months I was not great, but I got me through it and now I love running and but yeah the first couple months of PT school were hard figuring out how to transition into full-time student no athletics and yeah. a whole different state on it top definitely, of that. Yeah I was kind of in the same boat with like a different state didn't know anyone going to grad school retiring from gymnastics and then you have an insane study I guess like load on you and it's definitely like incorporating working out some sort of movement things like that i mean it took me probably a solid two and a half years or so to actually figure out and get my stride back with like working out and doing things that i loved doing and things like that so it's definitely like a transition but you figure out what you enjoy i think For in the sure. long run yeah. and your identity changes over time you're not just like one person yeah but, yeah I think that's a free thing.
Um, so thank you, Abby, for hopping on here and chatting. I know. Well, I thought you were nervous, <laughs> but apparently not. Anyway, so um, if you do want to learn more from us, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Abby will be in probably like a couple videos every now and then um, just to kind of help out and not force my husband to be a part of every single <laughs> video that requires two people. Um, <laughs> so yeah, let us know if there's anything in particular that you want to learn about um, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like this video, and let us know what you want to see in the comments. We will see you next time.